Tony Ricketts here from Online Marketing. I'm here with Zach as well. Today we want to talk about generalist agencies versus niche specific agencies. So a generalist agency is somebody who focuses on any business, right? Usually local businesses, but they can also be nationwide as well. But they don't they don't specifically focus on one niche or industry. So other agencies like us, Lawn Line Marketing, we focus specifically on lawn and landscape companies, and that's all that we do. So, yep. Zach, let's talk about that a little bit. Let's start with onboarding. Yes. Right? What, do, what does onboarding look like? How is it different from working with a generalist agency versus an industry-specific industry? So some of the feedback that I get right off the bat when we start the onboarding is you guys understand the questions to ask. Mm -hmm. and. Even having that level of knowledge and just understanding what you need to ask compared to a generalist agency where they might do a quick Google search before the onboarding and they might know questions to ask like, do you do aeration? When the questions that we're asking are, do you do double pass aeration? Do you automatically overseed? Is that included? Is it? An do you offer a liquid aeration? Liquid right? aeration. Are you doing spring or fall, right? The, exactly. The questions that show we understand your business a lot more. And diving a little bit deeper um, into the seasonality, that's another aspect that I think the generalist side misses out on, you know, understanding there's differences between the north, the south, understanding do you oversee, do you not oversee, depending Absolutely. on the grass type. I mean, it gets so specific in this industry that you have to understand the little questions to ask, and then from those answers that you get, how do we dive deeper, and how does that impact the next question? Absolutely. The questions that we are going to ask our companies versus what a generalist agency is going to ask their clients are going to be very different from client to client, whereas ours are the same. So it makes it easier for them to onboard with us because they don't have to give us the education that they have to give every other generalist agency. And that's gonna work with any niche specific marketing agency across the board. If you're a plumbing company, look at a plumbing specific marketing agency, right? If you're a dog walking company, there will be dog walking marketing agencies for you. These people understand and know your business. It's gonna make it a lot easier to get started with those agencies. One of the other aspects then um, that differentiates your niche, your niche agencies from your generalist agencies is the strategies that you employ to get the results. So when you look at a generalist agency, what you see more often is, all right, we're gonna run Google ads, we're gonna run Facebook ads, whatever the platform is, and we're just gonna put all of your services on there, we're gonna run and see what happens. Right. Um, in this industry though, in this niche, uh, you can't do that, it doesn't work like that. Um, what you see is if you were trying to run patios on a platform that's not designed for something that's a higher tier service, you're not gonna get the results, you're gonna blow budgets, the numbers just don't make sense. So what you'll see is that you have to curate the strategy depending on the services that are offered, and I would say any niche agency will be able to do that, um, specifically in this industry though, it is extremely, extremely important. So when you look at the platforms and you see the services that are provided, how do you generally see that separation occurs between services and platforms? What are the, the matches that you're pairing up? Right, well what I would say is that it all starts really with the data, right? Being because you're working with a niche specific agency, they've got more data to look at and to create those strategies that they know are going to get results, right? Um, agencies like ours, we run millions and millions of dollars through these programs that we've collected data on, that we've analyzed, and we know which platforms, which strategies, which audience targeting, which creatives are all going to work, right? So like, let's, let's take some examples of this. Let's utilize, let's use the aeration overseeding service that we've been talking about uh, already in other segments of this video. Most homeowners, they don't know what aeration and overseeding is, or that they need it, or when they need it, right? So that right there, that piece I just said by itself is one of the reasons why you wanna work with a niche agency, right? Because we know that homeowners don't know what aeration is and that they need it. Yeah. It's your job to do it. To inform so them, utilizing, finding ways to inform them. Absolutely, but utilizing a platform through your regular marketing where you're wanting to get new inbound leads, Google Ads is not gonna be the best platform for that because Google Ads is a platform where they tell Google what they want. So in a service where the homeowner doesn't know that they need it, Google's gonna be a, a dead, dead place for you to go. You're not gonna get any results. Whereas say it's like Facebook or Instagram, that is an outreach platform where you're targeting people based on their buying habits and their behaviors uh, and, and their historical uh, data points, you can reach those people and inform them that they need this service and generate more, more uh, results for it. All right, let's talk about trends a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. You know, trends so, are another thing that can help a generalist and uh, 
spe industry specific marketing agencies. Mm -hmm. So being that you interact a lot yep. or used to interact a lot with the clients, exactly. tell us about the trends that you spotted that you've seen that the clients are asking you about. How, mm -hmm. how is us being an industry specific or any other marketing agency that's industry, industry specific, how does spotting the trends really benefit the customer and what kind of trends are we looking at? Yeah, absolutely. So our client communication team is constantly in contact with all kinds of companies across the country here. So we have different concentrations from what we've seen. Um, and this is the same in any other niche. You'll see certain hot spots around the country. One being Dallas-Fort Worth is a perfect example. That area of the country, lawn care, landscaping is exploding. There's been lots of suburbs that are going up. People are getting pushed slightly further outside the cities. Developments are going up where lots of land, lots of lawns that need to be cut. Um, is a perfect example. So one of the trends that I've seen is more on the operations side. So I have business owners that come to our client communications team and ask questions on, hey, I've seen that there's now this development on the software side. So for example, uh, we're looking at DeepLawn is a perfect example. Shout out to Joel at DeepLawn. Um, and they ask, hey, have you, do you know anybody that's using this? Have you seen any right. results from this? Mm -hmm. um, other trends on the operations side besides software are gonna be more on the hardware side. So I think of robot mowers. Mm -hmm. I have clients that come to us and they ask, hey, do you have any clients in this this area that are using robot mowers. Right. And as a niche agency, we can talk on that. And we can say, yeah, I've got clients in this area that are using it. They're seeing good results, bad results. They're seeing it's a great upsell or people aren't that interested in it. They're able to come to us with the pain points and explain what they're seeing. And in turn, we can relay that same knowledge back to our clients. Another benefit of working with an industry specific marketing agency is we know what the KPI should be for your marketing results, right? We know where your cost per lease should be. We talked about closing rates earlier, where those should be obviously, but when it comes to specific marketing, we know what those KPI should be. And it's also going to change across the board and the regional aspect comes into it as well. So like, for example, I can tell you 100% that landscape design build services out in San Diego cost a hell of a lot more to generate leads than what they do in Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm. right? Or pretty much anywhere else in the country that we, rank, that, that we rank marketing <laughs> for, right? I can tell you that when we optimize campaigns for people, you, these are bigger projects, yeah. 80, 100K plus design build, you're looking at 200, 250 a lead, easy, all day long out in San Diego. But if you go to like, let's I'm say- thinking Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha, Nebraska, right? You're looking at 40, 50 bucks That's exactly a lead. exactly what I was saying. 60 bucks a lead all day for patios. Design build, larger projects, outdoor Absolutely. kitchens, all day. Absolutely, you go down to Southeast Florida, you're looking at 100, 120 bucks a lead, yep. right? So working with various uh, generalist agencies, they're gonna have none of that data. They're not gonna be able to give you that. It's literally, if they gave you any numbers at all, it's gonna be taking a shot in the dark. There's no right? reference point. There's no reference points. A question that pops up way too often, it's a misunderstanding there that niche is always gonna be more expensive when it's really not the case. And when you consider all the benefits, especially on the niche side, when you're looking at the knowledge that can be shared, you're looking at the baselines that we've analyzed through millions of dollars of paid ads, through SEO and all that. I mean, there's so much more benefit that you can really pull out of the niche side and the cost doesn't even always reflect that. No, no, not at all. I mean, cost, when it comes to digital marketing, it's not like, we're not we're not picking between Kraft macaroni and cheese and the knockoff brand at Walmart yeah. here, right? Are this, you saying that Kraft is the high tier? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Velveeta. Oh, yeah. So let's say, I like Kraft. <laughs> uh, let, let's say that you, these are not apples to apples, right? We are not selling a product. This is not a commodity that mm -hmm. we're selling. So you have to, this is what's really hard for the consumers, and this is probably a topic that we should cover, is how to find the marketing agency and how to choose them and evaluate what are you getting for the price that you're paying. That's what it comes down to, because at the end of the day, expensive is a relative term, right? The ROI is what matters, right? So for example, if you give me 10 bucks and I give you a dollar back, that was a pretty expensive dollar. Not a good deal. Very, very expensive $10, dollars, right? <laughs> Terrible deal. But if you gave me a million dollars, which is way more expensive than 10 bucks, and I gave you back a hundred million, is it still cheap or still expensive? No, absolutely. So expensive is relative to the ROI, right? It's not expensive if you get that return. So when you look at the various agencies out there, there's going to be generalist agencies that are far more expensive than, than what we are as a niche agency, even as the one of the larger or the largest agency in the space. So if you guys found this type of footage valuable, if you found the information that we're sharing and conversing about, uh, give us a follow on any of your favorite platforms. Um, we'll have some more content coming out here shortly. Any types of tips that we can provide for you guys, any types of insights, knowledge within the industry, um, and cutting edge items as well. So keep an eye out, give us a follow, and we got more coming soon.